All right, well, welcome to Microsoft Virtual Academy. Uh, this is introduction to Angular 2 and a little bit of TypeScript. I'm uh, Christopher Harrison, and today I'm happy to be joined by Spiros Misrelakis. Got it. Excellent. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, again, my name is Spiros Misrelakis, uh, the director for uh, on-site programs for Coding Dojo. Uh, also, my uh, MBA from Grand Canyon University, and um, love computers. I've uh, been working on computers for a long time now. Programming. Um, I had to do a lot of continued education with MIT. I love the the programs and the classes they have there. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, Really big with cybersecurity. I really like that. It's kind of like my uh, hobby. Okay. Nice work. And of course, new technology in the matrix. I like it. I like it. I dig it. Um, as for me, I'm uh, Christopher Harrison. I'm a uh, developer evangelist with, uh, with Microsoft. Uh, I uh, do an awful lot of uh, web stuff. Uh, I certainly love OSS, love Visual Studio Code. And in my spare time, I'm a marathoner, I'm a husband, and I'm a father of uh, one four legged child. So, what are we going to be talking about today as far as uh, Angular yeah, goes? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, quite a few things here. We have uh, the Angular overview. We're going to talk up about um, why Angular, what Angular is. We'll go into that. Uh, TypeScript, uh, the big picture of Angular, um, building blocks of Angular, just kind of the pieces on their own. We just wanted to identify them separately and then how they connect together. Uh, and then I'd like to just do a kind of uh, to-do list, right? Just something you can relate to other things you probably have seen in other, uh, other websites and, and other things. Um, and just kind of bring it all together at the end with a little review and then other resources you can use later on. So. Excellent. All right, so what is, what is Angular? What is SPA? What are single page apps? T talk to me about all of this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of the questions, again, what, what is Angular? Uh, it's easy for me to tell you guys that um, Angular is a MVC structured framework that has a single page application and is a client side templating with testing. Okay. Oh. All right. So, um, I, how do you mean uh, client side templating? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I think the best way to kind of explain all this is kind of giving you kind of a, a story behind it, right? And kind of identify the roadblocks developers get into okay. as they go through and then why these kind of things came up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just let's assume that you're building a website yourself, right? Um, and um, uh, let's say it's like GitHub, is a good example for a website you're building. And you're on your own, and then you realize, you know, GitHub is a very large website. I can't do it on my own. Uh, so you signed up myself and Christopher, and we're like, hey, let's all three of us build this website together. So we realize now three of us will build a website, but we can't all work on the same file, right? Uh, it'd be a mess to try to update everything, right? right? So we decide, well, let's separate out our website of GitHub, let's say in parts. Um, I'll be building some features, you'll be building some features, Christopher will be building some features, and we'll separate these out in different folders. Um, so essentially what we're doing there is we're kind of creating a framework, right? Uh, kind of like a file and structure, a folder structure and organization of where we can put these files. So that's part of it is kind of the framework and that's kind of where it derives from, right? It's kind of the organization piece. But then as we code, uh, we realize that, let's say you're using jQuery, I'm using underscore, you're using another library, and then we realize that's very inconsistent from each other, right? Um, we want to be a little more consistent and we also notice that the coding styles that we use, they're very different from each other. So we say, you know what, let's kind of work together and identify the, the libraries we want to use together um, and perhaps even the file structure we want to use. Uh, maybe we'll decide some folders will hold files for uh, the logic, some will hold files for our view pages, some will hold files for like the database. So kind of creating the structure and, and giving each folder a purpose, more so beyond just what feature it is, it's kind of creating what we call like an MVC structured, structured framework, right? Um, so that's another reason why that has come up, right? So that's one of the solutions there for, for that issue. But then, again, we just continue to code and uh, we realize we're building this website out, it's looking great, but we realize we want to change pages, right? But we want a lot of the stuff on the page to stay there. We only want parts of the page to change. Um, but we end up seeing is we keep giving the users a new page, which might not seem like a big deal, but if you think about it, if I have a bunch of images on a page and then I just want a small part of my page to change, and I give them another set of those images, they have to wait for everything to download again, and it takes a long while, right? So we say, you know what, let's make it so that every time somebody clicks on a different menu, we only update a different part of, a certain part of the page, um, which is awesome, because then they don't have to reload the entire page, it's a lot faster, great, better user experience. And that idea of just updating part of the page is what we call a um, single page application. So you're going closer to that concept, right? And single page applications can be kind of arranged. It's not like everything has to be either single page application or not at all. 
Right. It can be a mixture, right? It can be kind of like some is single page, some is not. So it just kind of depends on it. Um, so we continue to code, and we realize as the project gets pretty big, um, we are having issues with scaling. Perhaps uh, we have a lot of people requesting pages, and perhaps let's make something up and say we're getting about 60 requests per minute, right? So one per second. Um, now, we realize that every time we give a page to a user, we have a HTML page with all the written data, and we have a JavaScript data that we want to put into the HTML page, right? And so to do that, the server has to take the data, take the page, put it together, modify the, the page, and then give that out to the client, right? And perhaps that part of putting the data together takes longer uh, than the, user, the server just spitting out a bunch of pages, right? So we realized that, you know what, let's speed this up, and let's have your browser or each person's browser take care of that job. Let's have the browser get the page from the server, just the HTML page blank, get the JavaScript data from the server, just all the variables and data, and have my individual browser, when I go to the website, put that stuff together. Now, the nice thing about that is the server may take now less than one second to put it all together and give me that page. And it's, it's going to be a lot faster, of course, on, on my browser because my browser just has to do one thing. As soon as the page comes in, does one job, half a second, it's done. But at least the server can send out maybe two, 300, let's see, of those requests per, per minute. So that's the idea of what they call uh, client-side templating, where I can give all the data and all the pages to the client, your browser, and have him do essentially all the work, right? There you go. Uh, and lastly, we realized that this is a big project. You know, you build login, and then I go in and I try to add encryption, and I screw something up, right? So we look at it and we say, that's, that's a problem, because if I didn't know that I messed something up on login, uh, how do we find that out? Right. We have to wait for the user or the, uh, uh, the customer to see it and then give us a, a comment. So this idea of testing is really helps us to make sure that the features that work stay working. So as we build things, we can make sure that when we add other features, we don't break previous features, and also testing the, pre the features themselves, right? Um, so that's also another thing that Angular does in kind of like a very nice, seamless way is give us ability to test. So all the four that I just said, uh, the MVC for structured framework, um, the single page application stack, and the, uh, uh, the client-side templating, as well as the testing, is all features that Angular gives us. Now, I know that there's actually a handful of frameworks that are out there, things like Ember and Backbone and, and Knockout and so forth. Where does Angular fit into the grand scheme of things? And, well, why should I learn Angular? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So I want to break this down to about, you know, just three ways of looking at it. Um, as a new developer, you may want to look at this and, and understand that Angular is definitely a very popular framework. And I have a slide there that just kind of shows the, um, how popular Angular is as far as, like, the, the searches. Um, but... Very popular, um, it has a high amount of demand. There's quite actually a lot of jobs out there, so if you're looking for kind of that framework that will land your job in the future, that's definitely something to keep in mind of. Um, also, there's a lot of support, which is great. Um, that just gives us um, a lot of support for you to search for answers and a lot of resources. The Angular team, I believe, is the size of 30 developers or more, and the community <laughs> itself is massive, so trying to find, uh, to fix errors uh, wouldn't be really uh, uh, no problem at all. And also, it's nice to know that it's a front-end framework, um, and as a new developer, you're most likely going to join in uh, teams that you're going to join the front end, right? Not likely to just jump into the back end as, as likely. Um, also, for seasoned developers, you should know that it is definitely a structured framework, uh, very opinionated. Um, also, this very productive in the way that it's kind of a modular design. And there is consistency because of that, right? Because everything kind of has to follow an Angular way. And then for the team leaders, uh, why would you even choose Angular as, as a framework for your team? It would be pro most likely because uh, it's very efficient. Uh, it'll make your team stay efficient and kind of the code quality will stay kind of the same all the way through. And then the longevity, right? With this much backing, this much support, it's likely to be a framework that will last us a very long time. Excellent. All right. Well, then I guess the last little thing, and we can do this in the next video, is to take a look at an example of what a single page app is all about. Yep. All right. So let's close this off and we'll come back and we'll take a look at what a single page app is all about.